I'm forgoing my college football eligibility to become a pro football player. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. This guy is stupid. Now, I'm not stupid. I know the full weight of what I'm doing. And there's a reason behind this. And for those of y'all that are familiar with my college football journey so far, you know it's been a struggle. For those of y'all not, let me break it down for you. It all started when I was in eighth grade ready to quit this sport. I went through constant bullying from my teammates and felt like I was never good enough. And I was basically ready to quit the sport. So the day before my first game, I prayed a prayer saying this. God, if you truly want me to play this sport, let me know. I'm sick of the constant bullying I've been going through. And I've lost the love for this game I once had. If you truly want me to continue playing this sport in your name, confirm it by letting me score in a touchdown tomorrow. Now, it was the next day. I sat through four quarters of the game waiting for my name to get called by the coach. But I still had my helmet on and had that mustard seed of faith that it was still possible. I'm a few yards from the coach and all of a sudden I hear, Cam. He calls me over and I run over to him. He then says, tell Marquel to throw you the ball on a slant. I couldn't believe it. So I ran over to the huddle and told them boys. Coach said, throw me the football on a slant. They couldn't believe it either. So I run my little slant route. The QB throws the ball and I'm in the end zone. And it's an interception. But wait, it doesn't stop there. The ball bounced out of the linebacker's hands and straight into mine. And I scored a touchdown. Now the funny thing is, this was actually a two-point conversion. But who cares, bro? God answered my prayer. So from this day on, I dedicated to playing the sport in his name. Now that y'all understand my why and the reason I do this, you can understand why I go so hard at this sport and the reason that I'm making this decision. But my journey didn't stop there because in high school, my journey would get even tougher. Now my high school experience was like no other. Any ups and downs in my journey, but I was still able to push through. However, my journey did not go how I wanted it to go. Coming into high school, I wanted to go D1. I wanted to go on the visits to the big schools. I wanted to get all the offers and I wanted to pay on one of the top teams in the country. But coaches just didn't see that potential in me. I was slow skinny and unconfident. No coach was going to pay me any mind. So through those four years of high school, I grinded daily, improving every single day, trying to become the best version of myself that I can possibly be. But it still wasn't good enough. And I ended up graduating high school with zero offers to my name. But I wasn't going to quit yet. God gave a plan for my life. I had to keep pushing. There were still other options. So I took the risk of walking on at a D1 FCF school in North Carolina called North Carolina a &T. However, this school had no idea who I was. So I had to do something to get on their radar. So summer of 2022, after I graduated high school, I went straight to their camp and I pulled up to their camp and balled out. You cannot tell me I was not the best receiver there. And because of this performance, I was able to get familiar with the receivers coach and he knew me by name and he loved what I could do. However, they weren't accepting anybody on the team in fall 2022. And he said that I have to wait till spring 2023 to come onto the team. And it was tough, bro. I have played football for 12 years straight. That was the first fall semester I wasn't going to put on shoulder pads. However, I took advantage of that time period grinding it out every single day preparing for my opportunity because I knew in my heart I had what it took to play for that team. Spring 2023 rolls around and the last thing I expected happens. The head coach gets fired and basically the entire staff leaves with him. A new coach rolls in and throws some new rules out there that would crush my dreams of playing for this team. He raises the GPA requirement for walk-ons to a 3.4. Now this is unheard of. Not even Power 5 schools have a 3.4 requirement for their walk-ons. The highest is a 3.0 and this crush me because I had a 3.18 GPA. If I just went a little harder in one class, I could have been playing for that team. And due to this, I wasn't able to walk on in spring 2023. I even contemplated quitting and transferring. However, I didn't quit and I wasn't going to transfer. So summer of 2023 rolls around and it's camp season once again. And I decided to pull up to their camps again and torched everybody there. Putting on a performance for the coaches to show that I have what it takes. The coaches knew my name. The players knew my name. Heck, even the trainers knew my name. And they had the same receivers coach from last year and he was just as impressed with my performance. So much that he even told me he followed me on Instagram and loved watching my videos. In my head, I'm thinking, if you love watching my videos, why not let me play for the team? But he gave me his phone number to stay in contact with him. And in my mind, after that camp, there was no way I couldn't walk on in fall 2023. Fall 2023 rolls around and they hold a walk-on meeting and lower the GPA requirement to a 3.0. In my mind, God, this is finally my chance. However, the Lord had different plans because they were not accepting any receivers on the team because they had almost 14 of them. The receivers coach even said, I may be better than some of these receivers, but he just has too many. In my mind, at that time, I realized the politics when it came to college football. You know that I might be better than some of your receivers, but I still can't play for the team. Knowing they already had enough receivers, I swallowed my pride and tried to go for DB. And listen, I'm a receiver at heart. So many coaches told me that I need to switch to defense and can't play this position, but I proved them wrong and showed that I have what it takes to become an elite receiver. So I turned in my paperwork showing that I'd be open to playing DB for them. And they didn't even hold the tryouts. I personally don't know anybody that was let on the team that semester. And at this point, it was my fault. Why do I continue
continue to give this school a chance. Do y'all know that feeling of constantly chasing after a girl for so long? You're literally everything she needs. She's your dream girl, but she constantly rejects you. No, y'all don't because y'all aren't simps. But that's how I felt about this school. The girl that constantly kept rejecting me despite I had everything it takes to be with her. This is not based on a true story. I hope y'all don't think this is. Back to the story, I basically wanted to quit again because you had me sign all this paperwork to not even hold tryouts. But despite that, I kept working in that fall semester and put in work like I never did before. Spring 2024 rolls around and in my head, I'm like, I'm done with this school. Whatever happens, happens at this point. And then I got the most devastating news. They were not gonna hold walk on tryouts in the spring. Is there a reason? No, despite not performing the best in the fall, they decided not to have them. At this point, I was ready to jump off a bridge. I wasted two years of my life at this school. I didn't even know how to process what I was feeling. I contemplated quitting and giving up on the sport altogether. I was even thinking of not posting football videos anymore, but nothing else I did compared to the feeling I get when I'm around this sport. Then I remembered something. The passion for this sport I have is God driven. Not being able to play college football isn't gonna stop me from being able to spread his name through this sport. And I can still go pro. Then I was scrolling on my phone one day and came by the story of Quantez Stiggers. He was the first CFL player drafted with no college football experience. Quantez was supposed to play at a D2 school, Lane College in August 2022. However, before he was ever able to play, his dad sadly passed away in September of 2022. So after that, he chose to drop out. He began doing DoorDash, Instacart, and even washing trucks to help support his family of 13 siblings. During this, he was reaching out to colleges for a second chance. However, nobody wanted him. And then he fell into a deep depression, ready to give up on his football dreams. Until his mom discovered the Fan Control Football League, an indoor 77 semi-pro league on Facebook. She signed him up and convinced him to give it a shot. Going through with it, he then became the youngest player in the league. He put on a crazy show that season, leading the league with five interceptions in 12 games. His tape got in the hands of a CFL scout, which led to his opportunity with the Toronto Argonauts. He then had a breakout season, having five interceptions over 16 games, was an all-star and won CFL Rookie of the Year. With that much production at the age of 21, he got the attention of the NFL. And just five months later, he heard his name called at the draft. He was picked in the fifth round at the 41st pick by the New York Jets. And when I heard his story, it completely changed my perspective on my situation. College football isn't my only way to make it to the league. And after I heard his story, I messaged Quantez. And he showed some love saying he enjoys my videos. So shout out to him. But hearing his story inspired me to go through with this decision. Now being inspired is nice and all, but what the heck is my plan? There are three phases to my plan. And I'm going to reveal phase one. The first step to achieving our dream of becoming a pro football player is getting on an arena team. Arena football is brutal, but it's the first step to being able to become a pro football player. Now there's actually an arena team in my area called the Carolina Cobras. And I've actually trained with multiple players on this team. This team holds trials for anybody to pull up. If I can go there and ball out, I could have the opportunity to become a pro football player. My trainer even plays for this team. If I can compete against them in training sessions, who's to say I can't do it on the field? And who's to say I can't be teammates with them? Now this won't be easy at all. This is still a pro football team, but I have faith and believe I have what it takes. But to get there, we need to accomplish five things. I'm going to reveal those five things in the next video. So make sure y'all like this video up and subscribe so you can stay updated with our journey. However, before I end this video, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Why won't I transfer? I'm going to be real with y'all boys. I'm done pursuing to play college football. Realistically, no school is going to let me on their team. And if they do, I'm going to have to go through the walk-on cycle once again, working my way up and playing college football till I'm 25 or 26 years old. And many of y'all will say, go Juco. I can get pro experience under my belt right at this moment. And my clock is ticking and I'm not trying to play college football till I'm 26 years old. And I don't think y'all realize you still have to pay to school when you're a walk-on. Taking out loans, you're going to be in massive debt once you graduate. And even D3, you have to take out loans to go D3. That's what they tried having me doing. Y'all want to talk about the glitz and glamour of this whole college football walk-on to scholarship player experience, but you don't even know what goes on behind the scenes. Now, my fault, y'all boys. I just had to go on a little rant there. But I'm just tired of seeing the same comments over and over again. However, if I'm able to get pro experience at the age of 20 and ball out, that will catch the attention of higher pro teams. Playing college football when I've lost two years already is a waste of time. And I'm standing on that. And I hope y'all can respect how I feel about this. And if you don't, I don't care. I've documented my journey since high school and I'll continue to do it even when I'm a pro. And if y'all want to see the beginning stages of my journey, I actually challenged Travis Hunter to some one-on-ones back in the day. And there's actually a big story behind it. So if y'all want to watch the video, make sure you click right here. I appreciate y'all boys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.